No, it was because it wasn't such an open door like it is now. Well, as far as the information, you know, yeah. uh, it was kind of like a closed business. It was kind of kept tight and, you know, didn't let too many secrets out, so to speak. Uh, the peak behind the curtain was very rare. And uh, I was a huge fan here growing up here in Toronto. We, we got a lot of wrestling on TV. We got so many different territories. We got Mid-Atlantic. We had AWA. We had, you know, the old WWF from, you know, on all the, but all syndicated shows. Yeah. Maple Leaf Wrestling, of course, the, the Tunnies, famous here in Toronto of and um, and stuff like that. So I was a huge fan growing up. And when I was old enough to be able to go down and drive down by myself, I would go down, I'd go and take pictures because I'd get like ringside seats and I'd, and I'd be close enough where I can get some good shots. And I'd come back to the next show, sell those pictures to, to fans outside and to fuel my wrestling habit, kind of help pay for it. And one day I got caught by a guy that worked for Jack Tunney. He took all the photo- pictures for the for the uh, promotion and for their for ma- uh, their magazine slash uh, a program for the shows. And he goes, "Hey, can I see your pictures?" I said, "Sure, here you go." He says, "Oh, how much are they?" I said, "They're two bucks a pop, unless you want you know like three for five or something like that." I was going, you know, I was trying to. Do yeah, something. yeah, yeah. So he says, "Oh, that's cool, but you can't do that. It's illegal." I said, "What are you? Who, why? Who are you?" He told me who he was, and I was like, "Oh." <laughs> he says, but you know what? Yeah, you seem like an okay guy, you know, huh? let me, maybe you can help me out. Maybe I can get you to help me take pictures and stuff like that. And I said, oh, cool. So he went and talked to Jack and he says, Jack says, we don't need another photographer, but he wants to meet you. So I met Jack and stuff like that. He says, look, uh, we'll find something for you to do. And, you know, starting off as uh, the gopher, so to speak. Yeah. Hey, I need one of these. Go get these. You know, here are the keys. To, to my car, go pick up so-and-so at the airport, that kind of stuff, you know what I mean? So it started to progress into getting to know, and then eventually I was allowed backstage. Oh, yeah. You know, to hang, you know, and so I got an idea and and became uh, friends with Pat Patterson. Wow. Oh my God, that that's a journey, and they could have gone really sour, quick outside selling the picture. Mm-hmm. Yes, uh, it could have been. Uh, it could have been a very different story. Let's put it that way. <laughs> yeah, luckily you have a nice personality because that could have gone like, "Oh, give me those pictures. Stop taking them. Get out of here, kid." Mm-hmm. And then it's like, "Boop, it's over." But here we are now. You know, so many years later. Now, eventually, you do become you know a referee. Now, how does that mm-hmm. transition from golfer to referee? Yeah. The, it, well, I mentioned earlier that I became friends with Pat Patterson and Pat is a big joker and likes to have fun kind of guy. So, you know, uh, we they would run Maple Leaf Gardens every three weeks here in Toronto. Mm-hmm. because And on Mondays in Brantford, in Brantford, Ontario, which is about maybe a little over an hour away from Toronto, they would do their wrestling challenge tapings. Okay. See, every three weeks it was Superstars of Wrestling in Poughkeepsie, New York. And then, you know wrestling challenge in Brampton, Ontario after doing Maple Leaf Gardens. So I got to know Pat because I would drive talent back and forth from Toronto to Brantford and stuff like that. And Pat says to to Jack one day, he says, Hey, you know, we got the kid here. He does all this stuff for us during the show. He waits around until the show ends so he can start doing, you know, uh, taking the talent back to the hotel and stuff like that. He says, why don't we use him? Why don't we make him a referee so we can use him during the show? And Jack says to Pat, do we want to smarten the kid up? And Pat goes, he's been in the locker room with the boys for the last uh, year and a half now. He kind of knows what's going on. So then Pat says, you know, go get yourself black sneakers, black pants, a blue shirt and a black bow tie. And carry it with you at all times. And I was like, okay, cool. But I didn't know enough to ask questions. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? So then one day at a, at a spot show here in Ontario, in Newmarket, Ontario, Chief J Strongbow, who real good dude, it was it was a the road agent. He says, "Jimmy Jam, you got your referee gear with you?" And I said, "Yes, I do, Chief." He says, "Put it on your reffing tonight." And I didn't want to tell him, but I don't know what I'm doing, you know. Right, right, right. Of course. <laughs> he, says, he says, "You're reffing the match with SD Jones against uh, the Red Demon, who was Jose Luis Rivera." So I said, "Okay." He says, "Get with them." So I got with them, and I and I was good buddies with SD. And I said, "SD, I'm reffing your match tonight." He says, "Oh, cool." I said, "I don't know." He says, "Stick with me. I'll talk you through it." So he talked me through it and he said, and after the match, he just said, you know what, get with the other reps, ask them questions, get them to tell you, you know, and yeah, it started there. Wow. Wow. That's, that's so funny because yeah, you are afraid probably to ask a couple of questions because suddenly something, wait, 
what are you doing in this position if you don't know what you're doing? Uh, mm -hmm. And then obviously here we are now today, but eventually you do work, uh, continue on with the WWF at the time. What are your first mm -hmm. impressions? Because that's like a circus. You know, you have the Hogan's, the Warriors, the Demolitions, you have so many superstars when you started out. But what was that first impression like? It, it was amazing because, you know, it, it, you, you saw these people on television, like like the Hulk Hogan's like the Andre, the giants, all these legends, all these icons. And now you're in the ring, you know, working with them, you know, I wish I could put it into specific words, but it's, it's incredible, especially being a fan growing up and loving the business and, and not being one of these guys who was like, yeah, I'm going to grow up and be a wrestler. I'm going to grow up and be in the wrestling business, stuff like that. I, I was just a huge, huge fan who loved it, who, was blessed and fortunate enough to be in the right circumstance at the right time to get into a business that I enjoyed and loved. 